you're all probably wondering why would she invite this American Nein Sprecher Sie Deutsch? I, <laughs> I'm, you know, I only speak English. Um, and it, it is this mutual respect, I think, that we have for our work and and the communities that we are both creating. And I, I'm, I'm glad to be inspiring some of it, but she inspires us as well. So, so let me, I will quickly sh shift to my sharing screen and uh, let's talk a little bit about, I'm going to move that down here. And, talk a little bit about uh, you know who is who are we from this envisioning team what are we about uh, there are going to be a lot of terms that I'll share here that aren't really earth shattering in terms of uh, language within the agile world or, or anything of that nature but how we've approached it as a team uh, is certainly uh, different. Uh, I just literally I'm sitting in a, a, a room in, at one of our other facilities in Farmington Hills, Michigan, and my colleague Andrew Henwood on the far left there, he and I are co-facilitating a workshop in the room right next door with a group of leaders from one of our divisions and doing a team building workshop, trying to get them uh, who they've just come together. And as it says here on the left, it's applying the science of engineering to the creation of vision and the behaviors necessary to, pr to pursue it. This group is literally in there. Uh, they just formed like two months ago and the leader said, you two worked with us a couple months ago. I'd love for you to come in and work with us. Uh, so that's what we're doing. So um, as we as a team, as individuals across North America, there are three of us here in the US, uh, two in Michigan. Brandon is down in our great court facility down in South Carolina. Uh, we have folks across Germany. Uh, there'll be one more person on this picture uh, next month. Uh, we have the United Kingdom with Mike. Uh, we have two in China and two in India, and we're continuing to grow. But what we're about is about creating this bigger network, and I'll get more to that again to this community aspect of how we're trying to build that. Um, and it's what you also see here as well is how we are obviously based on our name and visioneering. We're really, really focused on our own vision, this idea of zero friction, but the idea that how there are negative frictions in the world and we're trying to reduce those negative frictions. Obviously there are positive frictions that we want to use to become better, but we focus on the negative aspects of how to fix that. And then our mission statement about how we empathetically coach. We teach coach, facilitate, mentor, but as it says here, coach, mentor, guide, helping people go through a lot of different learning, unlearning and relearning such that we can impact our organization, whether it be through methodologies, be through processes, or even tools. I have to get my mouse here. There we go. So one, of, as I said, with our vision statement, just to highlight that a little bit more, uh, I was, um, I had a great mentor, uh, who unfortunately passed away on Christmas Day in uh, 2019. And for roughly a year and a half, he helped me really understand this power of vision and power of mission. And it's one of the things that a lot of the people who come onto the team and who are in the community around the team who, who are looking at us saying, you have this focus on how to deliver through the vision, how to cascade the information, be it cascading from the top down or be it delivering and cascading up. And through that mission, we always are challenging ourselves to, to determine whether or not we're meeting that, whether the work that we're prioritizing fits within that space. We formed because uh, again, these are mission vision statements that are, you know, these are generic terms in, in the marketplace. We know that ZF has a, a mission of next generation mobility and how we then work with that as we work through our down to our level uh, of, of envisioners. As we then work with each team, 
and we work with other people who are trying to act in the same manner, we really focus on this clear understanding of who are we in that vision, mission, values. Again, as I said, I'm working in this other room with Andrew, and in the next hour, they're going to be talking about those actual values. What what are all those things that they as a team value such that it impacts their mission and that it drives the strategy and, and everything else that they do? We have one item on this picture that's quite unique. Um, this red line between the strategic language of leadership and the operational language of management. And this is something that, again, working with the communities as they're trying to bring about change within their areas and bring about an understanding of, again, their strategy or the work that they're doing. We're trying to build leaders that work above that line and allow for them to understand how to separate that language of leadership and management so that they're not always down into that management weeds of doing the work. And oh, I should mention finally, uh, objectives and key results, OKRs. That's another big topic that we work in, working with people in understanding something that's called the language of outcomes. And within the language of outcomes, uh, I'm going to jump ahead here to this one to give you a nice an idea of something that we bring in everything we do, in all the communities that we work with, in all of the conversations that we have. We're always trying to understand well, what are the core behaviors that you're bringing about. Now, while this says core behaviors of the agile mindset, these are core behaviors of any high performing team and organization. Now, we can start right in the middle, culture of trust, and you can kind of wind your way around this circle, if you will. It's sort of, a, believe it or not, it's like a Fibonacci sequence. If you have that great culture of trust at the core, and then as you uh, again focus on vision, as I kept mentioning, and we work through a lot of these other behaviors, which are core to the agile principles and the agile manifesto, and even in the lean manifesto or the safe principles, anything that we talk about, we just boil these down to 10 core basics. And when we're doing all those together, and as I mentioned, the, this idea of language of outcomes, and we all know about self-governing and self-organizing, and we all know about, for example, retrospectives, the ability to build on these behaviors and have leadership focus on that higher level of language of, of, of leadership through these behaviors gives teams an opportunity to really thrive. Just going to jump back here to this one because as I mentioned this idea give me a second this idea of again how do we bring that those behaviors into the into the space into working with uh, individuals and teams and leaders as I mentioned within that mission mission statement this learning unlearning relearning that's that learn that paths of learning how do we understand something? How might we try to unlearn that thing? And then how do we go about relearning the thing that we just unlearned or the thing that we knew before? We also then take on different stances, teaching, coaching, facilitating, mentoring, guiding. And it's really important to understand how these different stances allow for us as engineers to uh, again, work with individuals in their space. It's not about us coming in saying, we're going to tell you this and you're going to do it that way. It's about how do we explore it together to open up your mind through the learning, unlearning, and relearning in, in these different stances. And at the same time, understanding how the methods and the processes and the tools impact the ability to do the work. So just by giving somebody a particular method doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to use a tool you know, properly or effectively for a project or for the work. A good example might be 
how might we use Microsoft Teams effectively for a team who is really focused on you know, delivering a software product? If Teams isn't giving them the ability to collaborate effectively or in a timely manner, or places to put, you know, a repository of software uh, uh, code, for example, like GitHub. Well, maybe Teams isn't proper uh, for them as a tool. So we have to explore what options are going to work best for them. And maybe there are processes as well that go along with that that we can look at. How do we how do we modify some of that in inside of this, the short cycles and small batches of the work itself? So we're always exploring again all these models and languages together. So let me jump again ahead. One more concept here. So one of the things, and this is why primarily um, Rebecca and I were talking, because as we're building this community of coaches, and uh, there is a term in our company, Agile Masters. I, I prefer to keep it at Scrum Masters because we're focusing on the Scrum methodology or, or, or framework. And then how do we how do how do they blend and work with the practitioners and leaders, et cetera? And so at that core of this of this agile network, while Envisioneering is promoting this, we are the team that brings these uh, coaches and masters and practitioners together so that we can allow for uh, that multiplication, that, uh, that ability to do that same type of work in other, other parts of the company. To have one team as, as, as overhead, if you will, to try to produce the same things across such a large company really isn't cost, effect cost effective. We have to find people who are similar in in how they you know similar in the ways that we think about again vision mission, our behaviors and the processes. How do we then bring about these this idea of ambassadors who not only talk about it but also do it who who actually are able to perform under pressure or in a certain situations or be able to think about the different stances to take when uh, working with a team, how to think about the different models. You know, I, I, sh I shared the pyramid of vision, mission, down through strategy, et cetera. We have many others about how to make decisions, how to better work in uh, in those in those time box spaces, how do there's there are there are models within models, so we're always working with people to try to expand that knowledge through their learning, but also because we help teach some of it, well, we get better at it too. Prime example, uh, again, working with Andrew today, and he's he's a master teacher. He was a high school teacher for 13 years. Excellent orator, excellent in front of people. And then he said something yesterday about being addicted to helping and teaching others. I, I've worked with him for five years and I've never heard him say that before. And I learned something about him and I learned something about his, his style, his process of how he's thinking about the work. It was a great opportunity for me to take that and start thinking, hmm, what are my values? How do I think about helping people? How do I use that stance of teaching or coaching to understand my way of working with other people? So again, it, just a, uh, being in those opportunities of working with others helps us learn and, and, and grow ourselves. So this is again, this is the, the concept of the network, the community, how we're helping build that and build on what other people, uh, what the what the rest of the company, I should say, really needs uh, from these type of coaches and, and um, practitioners. So I, I went through that pretty quick, uh, so I'm going to ask to check if what kind of questions are there? I'm going to come up here on my screen. 